Hello, algebra students, and welcome back to another video lesson as we continue to explore completing the square. Remember, this process is really helping us to convert standard form to vertex form. And so our goal is to make sure that we can convert back and forth so that we can find all of those different characteristics of the parabola. So yesterday we worked on, on problems like this, where we were trying to complete this square by using algebra tiles if needed. All right, and again, the goal is to take this standard form that looks like this, where we're given the y-intercept of 12, convert it over here to vertex form so that we can find the vertex. If you remember, um, we tried to use algebra tiles, right? So I had like an x squared, and I'm not going to draw these perfect because I don't want to take a ton of time. So we had an x squared, and then I had 14 x tiles. And if you remember, I would put half of them on this side, so like 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and seven of them this way. And then I would put seven going this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we'd have seven this way and seven that way, right? So I would have X plus seven up here, and I would have X plus seven down there, meaning how many ones tiles, how many single tiles would we need in this box or this hole as we described it to complete the square. If I have seven here and seven there, we would need 49. Okay. And we're going to need to use both that seven number and that 49, right? So this would be 49. I completing the square by adding 49, but the factor, as we call it, the two factors on the sides are X plus seven and X plus seven squared, right? So I'm taking half of that 14 and putting them here, the other half of the 14 here to help me identify that whole. So if we think about this conceptually, y squared plus 20y, right? Here's my squared. I would put half of them this way. So I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of them that way. And I'd also have 10 of them this way. 10, 10. So X and 10 going this way and X and 10 going that way. So if I have 10 by 10, how many singles would I need over here? I would need 100 of them. So that's the number that goes here that we added in 100 so that we could rewrite it to look like X or in this case Y plus 10 squared. Okay, same thing applies even in number three if it's a subtraction, right? That's okay if it's subtraction. All that happens is then this part becomes a subtraction. All right, if I were to try and write it again, I'd have the Z in this case, Z by Z, and I need 30 bars. So 15 of them are going to go this way, and 15 of them would go this way. So 15 by 15, I'd have 15 by 15 single spaces, and 15 times 15 is 225. So we're adding in a 225 to complete the square, meaning I would have x and negative 15, or z and negative 15. So why don't you pause the video here and see if you can't figure out what value do I need in the blank space to complete the square, and then how does that help me factor? All right, so in number four, I'm gonna try and erase this stuff over here for a second, give us a little bit more workroom. And again, some of you are gonna catch the pattern and not need to draw these algebra tiles, but x squared and 10, so I would have an x, and then I'd have five single bars, and then I'd have an x, and five single bars. So that means the space down here, the whole would be five by five, or I'd have to get 25 of them. So I need 25 singles, we're adding that in, meaning we have X plus five squared from those two sides. Now, 
This one's a little bit trickier because we have a value of five, right? So I still have an X on the top and an X over here on the side, but I'd have half of them up here or 2.5 and I'd have half of them over here, which is 2.5. So that hole down here that we're trying to fill in with singles uh, is going to be 2.5 times 2.5 or 6.25. 6.25. So we would have 6.25 added in here to represent the singles. But then that area breaks down into x plus 2.5 squared. All right, so that's the first step in completing the square. That's the first step in allowing us to transition over here. Notice on all of these though yet, we don't have that K value. We don't have this K to show us how the vertex is also shifting up or down. And so we need to add one more step in here. All right, so here's what the original problem is going to look like y equals x squared plus 6x plus 10, convert that to vertex form. So what we are going to do, okay, is we're going to write it a little differently. 6x plus some blank plus 10. We need to complete the square with just this part. We don't use the 10. All right, so x squared plus 6x. This is just like we were doing on the previous slide, okay? What am I adding? Well, I, again, I'd have an x by an x, and if I need six singles, that means I have three of them and three of them on each side. So how many singles would I need to fill the hole? That is nine. So we would be adding in a nine right here, okay? So I'm adding in nine. But here's the trick. If I add in that nine, what I'm really doing is taking nine away from the 10 that I already had, right? I'm borrowing in a sense. So I've got to take away those nine that I'm putting in, take them away from that C value, okay? I've got to take them away, meaning this outside part is going to be plus one y equals something plus 1. If I added the 9 in there, I had to borrow it from that 10. What we need to do now is figure out, well, what is this quantity squared? Right? This is that other part. x plus what squared? Well, if we look back to our algebra tiles down here, I've got 3 and 3. So it must be x plus 3 squared, and it's this piece that goes out front. X plus three, quantity squared plus one. Remember that 10, we took away the nine that we added in for those single tiles. So this is now vertex form, right? I can use that. The vertex would be at the point negative three comma one, right? So we converted it to show where the vertex would be. Now, I kind of summarized those steps on this page, and what I would probably do is pause and write this down. Um, so that way, as we go through the next example, you can kind of follow those steps. All right, hopefully you wrote that down. But again, step one is to create that square with just the x squared plus the bx part so that you can fill in that hole. Right, so we can fill in the hole, and then we're going to try and write those results as x plus some number squared. But whatever number we used to fill that hole, don't forget to take it away from that original c value, and then let's write it in vertex form. Okay, I hope you got those down. Here's another example, and I would write this down. But they're not just going to ask you to always convert, right? They're going to ask you, what is the vertex of this problem? What direction does the parabola open? What is the y-intercept? What's the axis of symmetry? They're going to ask you different questions where they don't just tell you to convert. Now, the dilemma with standard form is that we can't find vertex right from it. But what can we tell? 
Well, we should know that the y-intercept is 0, 11 because that c value right here, the 11, that is the y-intercept. We can also tell what direction the parabola opens. There's an a value of 1. It's positive. So it opens, oops, can't spell, it opens up. And if it opens up, we could probably also say that it has a minimum value. It's got a low value. But I still don't know what the vertex is. And if I'm going to find the vertex, what we've got to do is convert that into vertex form. We've got to use completing the square. Okay, so we got to convert it. So again, what I like to do is I like to just show where I'm going to put this information. 4x plus some blank value plus 11 out here. And then I'm going to try and complete the square with just this x squared and 4x part. So I've got an x and an x. And if I need 4, that means I would have 2 bars and 2 bars. Meaning what would the hole down here be if it was 2 this way and 2 that way? The hole would be 4. 4. But in order for me to put a 4 in that space, I need to remember that I borrowed or that I'm taking it away from that 11. Right? So that vertex is going to have something plus 7 then on the end. Well, how do we change this x squared plus 4x plus 4 into something squared? The answer is over here. I have an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. Since that's the same thing, that's what's inside of this parenthesis, x plus 2 squared, or y equals the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 7. We're not quite done because the question asked, what is the vertex? And the vertex is the opposite of what's in there, so negative 2 positive 7 for our vertex. So I hope, again, I hope you wrote some of those examples down, and I hope that you took these steps to help you remember what goes in what order, because then this type of example hopefully becomes a little bit easier. A lot of steps, so if you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.